Hey, what's up, Team Koha? I am in Southern Virginia right now. I'm heading towards Ty Smith, the Snake Man. Yes, that is his name. He's very knowledgeable about uh, the wildlife here in Virginia, especially herps, birds, um, and he rescues animals. So let's go uh, see what he has to show us today. All right, so we are here at Ty, the Snake Man Smith's house. He has shown me his awesome collection and we're gonna get into why what? Why you shouldn't take turtles out of the wild. So let's get into it. That's a good idea. So yes, I'm Ty Smith and I'm a former park naturalist and a master naturalist and I do all kinds of stuff with a lot of my favorite animals. So this is one of them. This is my buddy Earnhardt and he is a red-footed tortoise. Now red-footed tortoises are turtles but not all turtles are tortoises. And one thing, one of the easiest ways to tell them, a turtle is going to be anything with a shell, any reptile with a shell. But the easiest way to tell a turtle and a tortoise is how they walk. So you'll notice when you look at Earnhardt, he'll walk on his toes. And we'll talk about some of the turtles later, and you'll see that they don't walk on their toes, per se. They walk kind of more flat-footed. they got these very column-like legs, very, very interesting animals. And this is because at a certain weight, uh, legs out to the side like most reptiles have just don't just doesn't work. Um, the thing I love about turtles is they make fun pets, but they don't really make great pets a lot of times. Now, for example, Ernard here, he's still a young male, but he can get up to about 65 pounds, and that's a big animal. So the amount of commitment going into this animal is similar to that of a dog. And that's something to think about whenever you've got a pet. It's a big commitment no matter what it is. So we'll talk about some of our more native turtles here and why if you see one, you should probably leave them wild. And then we'll talk about some turtles that make pretty good pets kind of toward the end. All right, so this is one of my rescues I have. This is a Eastern Box Turtle. Now, these guys are often thought of like tortoises, but they're very different. If you notice when he walks here in a little bit, there he goes, his feet are much flatter to the ground. These are more flat-footed animals. And that's one of the characteristics that makes a turtle a turtle. So really turtles are kind of split into two groups, not counting sea turtles because they're kind of very distantly related. But you have what we call hidden neck turtles and side neck turtles. Tortoises are a hidden neck turtle. They pull their head straight back in their shell. And all of our turtles native to Virginia are hidden neck as well. You'll notice when he pulls his head in, it goes straight back into his shell versus turning it sideways. So Eastern box turtles, a lot of people pick these guys up and try to keep them as pets. And this is what happened with this guy. He got picked up and attempted to be kept as a pet. But Eastern box turtles... Uh, are very interesting turtles. A lot of people think of them, like I said, like tortoises. So they feed them like you would feed a tortoise. A lot of vegetation, greens, fruits, vegetables, and they love fruits and vegetables, but they also eat a lot of protein. And that's something people do not feed these guys. I feed these guys earthworms. Uh, I feed them some silver sides occasionally. I cut them up and feed them to them, and they love them. Uh, these guys in the wild, if they come across a dead deer in the forest, I've even seen them eating on dead things like that. I've seen them eating on pos dead possums. So they are much more carnivorous than people give them credit for. And one of the most common things I hear when people are trying to keep one of these is he's not eating lettuce. You know, I can't get him to eat anything. And I'll say, well, throw a worm in there. He'll definitely eat that. But this is a very good example of a turtle that should be left in the wild. Not only are they difficult to kind of keep, but they also don't breed very quickly. They're protected in most of the states they're found in. Uh, in Virginia here, they're considered vulnerable. And that is because a female box turtle, you know, you'd get a river cooter or a snapping turtle, they lay dozens of eggs. But a female box turtle on average lays about six eggs. And she'll lay two or three nests uh, with those eggs in them. So... That's not a big turnout. The other thing that's really hurting these guys other than over-collection is habitat uh, 
splitting. So what is happening, you've got a big block of woods and you build a highway across the center of it and you have two blocks of woods. The problem is when these guys go to breed, they don't use scent, they don't use anything like that to find a mate. They just walk around till they bump into a mate. And they have these routes that are in there that they use. It's instinctual routes that they follow. And when you build a highway through an in, uh, one of their routes, they have to cross that highway in order to find a mate. And they do get a little more active when it's rain, so that's when you tend to see them. But they'll follow these routes out in the highway and get hit. So that has really hurt these animals. They just don't recover real quick, and they grow really slowly. This one here is probably about 40 years plus. Uh, it takes them about 10 to 15 years to even reach sexual maturity. So they're a very slow-growing turtle. But they're a very cool turtle and very beautiful. So definitely one, if you see it, you should leave it in the wild. But they are a very, very cool turtle. This here is Bertha, and she is a reddered slider. She's a rescue as well, and all the red-eared sliders I have are rescues, and I have three red-eared sliders. Uh, the problem with sliders in Virginia is red-eared sliders are not native, but they're a subspecies of the common slider, and we do have native common sliders, the yellow-bellied subspecies, in uh, Virginia, meaning that you can only keep five of these guys. And the reason I have limited myself down to three of these, not uh, because I constantly am getting offers to take many more, but the reason I've done that is if I come across somebody trying to find a home for a yellow-bellied slider, I can definitely use that for education. If I have all red-eared sliders, it really doesn't help the education aspect. But these guys here do not make good pets. And... You know, they're really nice. I love them, but they're not what people expect when they're getting a pet. Once again, it's one of those animals you've pretty much got to put about as much commitment into as a dog. They're, as you can see, they get a good size. They're real hefty. They take a lot of food, and turtle food is not cheap. But the other thing with the reared slider is they don't tame really well. As you can see, she would bite me in a heartbeat if I let her but they need a lot of water and so a turtle this size you would need at least a probably about a 90 gallon aquarium to house one now what i do to kind of help i keep mine in a kiddie pool uh, a pretty good sized kiddie pool but it holds well over 100 gallons of water so it's plenty of room for her to move around but even then sometimes i want to get something a little bigger for her because she is very active and the red-eared slider is a very, very active turtle. They're very fun to watch. And that's one of the best parts about them. These have been introduced to Virginia because they used to sell them even in nickel and dime stores for about 10 cents a piece as babies. And some places still sell them today like that. Some flea markets you can find them. And they'll tell you that these guys only get about four inches long. Now, that's obviously a lot more than four inches. So... Red-eared sliders can get up to 11 inches, especially the females, uh, but tend to stay more around 8. And this is a very big specimen. She was a little bit overfed. But as you can tell, she wasn't cared for really well uh, when she was young. You can see there's a lot of what we call pyramiding on the shell. And what this comes from is inadequate uh, nutrition. The shell is all bone, except for it's got some keratin scutes on the top. Keratin's the same stuff our fingernails are made out of. So young turtles need a lot of calcium. And a calcium deficiency or too much calcium, and this is it causes pyramiding. So pretty much as the scoot is building, it's using calcium underneath to grow the bone. And not enough calcium, you start getting little lumps in it. And too much, you start getting lumps because it's not spread out evenly. So... You do not want to see pyramiding in your turtle. And that's something you really got to watch for. And that's one of the most common things I see with red-eared sliders is pyramiding. But they're 
a lot of people think I don't like red eared sliders because every time somebody's like, I want to get a red eared slider, I tell them exactly why they don't want to get a red eared slider. But I love these guys, and that's why I keep them. They are just a pain. As you can see, it's hard to hold them. Any way you're holding them, you're either going to get scratched or you're going to get bit. Uh, I prefer to get scratched, but because that's the other thing with turtles. A turtle bite is a very serious bite. Uh, I've been bit by several turtles, and I've been bit by several snakes. And, you know, if the snake's not venomous, I'll take the snake any day. Uh, this is just a mashing. And the beak's pretty sharp, too. These guys are made to take down fish. And they do a pretty good job at biting fish in half. And even though these aren't snapping turtles, they will still give you a pretty good bite. But one of my favorite animals I keep. I love the red-eared sliders. They're beautiful, but I never recommend them as pets unless you've got ample space and you want a good active turtle. Uh, if you live in an apartment, this is definitely not the animal. If you want to put a turtle on the second floor, this is not the animal because a 90 gallon tank is going to weigh about 900 pounds. And that is not something most floors are meant to handle long term. So, Keep that in mind, too, if you're thinking about getting one of these. So this is Cooter, and he is an Eastern River Cooter. And these are a pretty common turtle uh, around bigger bodies of water and rivers. You'll see him out basking. But River Cooters, see, right, he's a good size. He's very manageable. He's four years old. They do not make uh, very good pets because they get pretty big, especially the females. The females get a lot bigger than the sliders do. The males, they stay a little bit smaller. He'll probably get another four or five inches in length uh, throughout his life. So he's about four years old. And so he came to me. He was a, so there was a school and the teacher went out with some student, students and they found a turtle's nest that had been dug up. And there was a, about three good eggs left and they threw them in the incubator and he was the only one that hatched out. So he was a good class pet for several years and they took really good care of him. But the teacher had to retire and when she retired, they had to find a new home for Cooter. So they took him to one of the local pet stores and you know, you can't sell native species in Virginia. So he called me and let me know. And he said, I think I got a great animal for you to use. I said, okay, so I come by and this is him. He is a wonderful, wonderful animal. I probably shouldn't say they don't make good pets because, I mean, he's they tame. He's really tame animal, but they're big. And so they're going to need, especially a female, a lot more space than a slider. So the other thing to think about when you have big turtles, you need big basking areas. You don't want one little basking area because it's not going to heat the whole animal up. You want something big enough to encompass this whole animal. You also need UVA and UVB lighting, which UVA is usually going to be incorporated in your heat bulb, but UVB is not. So you'll have to get another light for that. So it's not a cheap animal. Uh, to set a turtle up, you're looking at a few hundred dollars set up to do it right. So, but this is one of my favorites just because he is really tame and... You know, it looks like he's clawing me up pretty good, and he is trying to get away, but that's just how turtles do. Now, one thing, if you look at the claws, this is something a lot of your male turtles uh, get, like on your sliders and cooters. These long claws are something the males use to attract the female. And you'll see them come up to the female, and they'll hold these claws out in front of their face and wave them around in the female's face, and it's kind of a little courtship ritual. And that's why his claws are so long. They are getting a little bit to the point I probably should look to trim them. But, you know, the front claws are expected to get like this. The back claws, you notice his back claws aren't anywhere near that long. And so I'm not too awful worried about him. But he is a, he's a good boy. But once again, probably not something you want to keep as a pet. It's going to be... A big animal. The other thing with cooters and sliders and other turtles is they're omnivores. So they eat a lot of greens, they eat a lot of meat, and you want to make sure that meat's good for them. 
They're going to eat a lot of fish, but you don't want to feed them goldfish. Goldfish are very high in thymonase, which destroys vitamin B. It dissolves it in the animal. You do not want thymonase in your animal. So you don't want to feed these guys goldfish. Uh, I like using frozen silver sides. Just thaw them out and give them to them. But I also will go and catch crappy. That's my favorite fish to do it with. And uh, fillet them and freeze the fillets to kill anything in them. And then thaw them out and cut them up into pieces. And they love it. And that gives good because the turtles actually need the fish scales to help build the keratin on the shell. It really helps. You get really nice shells like that. And they need the calcium from the bones. So sometimes it works good just to feed them whole silver sides or stuff like that. So, But the other big thing is you want to get them on a pelleted diet. Makes it easier, you know, as a staple. It's kind of like your, you know, your dog. But it's not something you should rely on. I mean, think of most of your pellets, you know, like your dog food equivalents. Turtle pellets, fish flakes. Think of them like a like a cheeseburger almost. You got your bun, you got your bread, you got your meat, you got your cheese, you got your lettuce and tomato, which are your fruit and vegetables. So it's everything you need in a diet, but it's not good to just eat hamburgers all the time. So it's good to get them on a diet outside of that to kind of give them what they're lacking and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, shrimp oil is another thing that turtles tend to do really well with. Uh, I like to give them uh, freeze-dried krill, stuff like that. River shrimp does really good for them. So very, very diet, but it does get expensive very quick, uh, especially with produce. Produce doesn't seem that expensive, but when you start buying produce and it goes bad in a couple of days and you don't use the whole thing, it gets a little expensive over time so but i love these guys they're it's just not an ideal pet based because of size not because of behavior but because of size and we'll talk about some more animals kind of like this all right so this here is the common snapping turtle one of my favorite animals native to virginia not very good pets in fact people find the babies not knowing they're snapping turtles and try to keep them as pets. And so once they find out they're snapping turtles, that's usually when I get a call or someone comes to me and says, hey, so someone found this guy down in Southwest Virginia and come back and decided they're gonna keep him as a pet. And then he was doing really well, eating really well for him. They asked the, they went to a field guide pretty much and was looking to see what species he was and when they found out he was a snapping turtle they were not as happy anymore so that's when they called me and said hey I've got the snapping turtle should I just release it and I said well considering you've had it this long and considering it would be about 150 miles from where you found it I would not release it and so I took him in and the thing with snapping turtles is they're a lot like monitor lizards. Uh, anyone who's kept a monitor, uh, you can tame them down. They tame down excellent. They're really good, but they're big, and if you don't tame them down, then you've got a problem. Uh, we all know why snapping turtles can be a dangerous animal at times. They've got that wicked jaw strength, and look at the neck. That neck right there is one of the key, there we go, one of the keys to why... They are such a scary animal. They can strike halfway up their shell. So holding one like this is not a good idea. The best way to do it is hold them by the tail, but have a hand underneath for support. And one this size, it's not really going to be that bad. But when they get real heavy, you can start pulling vertebra if you just pick them up by the tail. A lot of people just pick them straight up by the tail, which isn't good. But they do tame down really well. The downside to keeping a snapping turtle is it's pretty much like keeping an, a, a tortoise in a fish tank. So one thing with aquatic turtles is you have to be able to keep an aquarium running. That is not the easiest thing to do. And then you're throwing in care of a reptile on top. 
These guys get big like a tortoise. I mean, captive specimens, you're looking about 35 pounds, but they can get a lot bigger. There's wild or uh, captive specimens up to 100 pounds and wild specimens into the 70s. Uh, they're a big animal. And if you feed them properly, they will be a big animal. So that's not something you want to keep in your apartment normally, is a big animal. And a big animal takes a lot of food. So when you're when they get big, you're feeding them a, a bunch of greens at one time. You get a you know a bunch of greens at the grocery store, and you just throw the whole bunch in there, and they'll eat them. And not to mention, they also eat a lot of fish uh, and just a lot of meats in general. Anything dead, they're going to eat it. Um, in the wild, one thing you got to watch, too, once these guys get big in the wild, they'll start eating other turtles. So if you're keeping them with other turtles, make sure they're sized appropriately because these jaws do not discriminate. They break bone and they tear meat. Um, these jaw themselves, they've got a lot of, uh, they got really sharp edges and they get sharper the closer to the back you get, kind of like a pair of scissors. And that's one thing you have to watch when they bite. That, that will cut right into you. And... But they also have pretty sharp claws. You'll have to keep the tr claws trimmed down, and that's most turtles. So it's a lot of stuff to think about. It's pretty much, once again, about the same commitment as getting a dog, but it's a lot less fun to watch. Uh, it is pretty cool when your friends come over to have a snapping turtle and say, look at my giant snapping turtle. It, mm -hmm. it loves me. I can, I can pick it up and rub its belly, and it's wonderful. But when you're watching it in a tank, it's not doing much. So snapping turtle is really cool. It would be a really cool pet to have for a day. And after that, it gets kind of boring. So that's the common snapper, one of my favorite animals. But now we're going to talk about a couple turtles that do make good pets, but they're not native. I mentioned there was two main families of turtles, the hidden neck turtles and the side necks. This one is a side neck. This is the African side neck, also called the helmeted marsh terrapin, African mud turtle. There's so many names. Uh, I don't even think I can really tell you the, I can tell you the species name they import these under, but really I believe we're starting to see this is a big species complex. It's a big mess of species. But these guys make excellent pets. They breed them in captivity regularly. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find a wild-caught individual in captivity. They grow pretty quick for turtles, and they breed at a young age, and that's why they've been so popular. You can find these guys at a Petco. In fact, I got mine at a Petco uh, a few years ago. I was still living in an apartment. This is a great apartment turtle. For a male, you'd probably get away with a 20-gallon long. Female, you'd probably need a 40-gallon breeder. So this one here is pretty much full-grown. They can get a couple inches bigger, and they're shy out of water, and they've got a little bit of a hen shell like a box turtle. They're kind of shy out of water, but they're still amazing to see in the water. They're a very active turtle in the water, and they're one of my favorites. So the, the pros with this guy, very small turtle. You know, you're not putting 900 pounds of weight on your floor. Uh, and they're a very good eater. They're all captive bred. So if you want an aquatic turtle, you can't beat this. Uh, you could also look for some captive bred mud and musk turtles. Uh, I've been seeing lately a lot of the scorpion mud turtles, uh, and they're pretty reasonably priced too. And the other thing that really helps these guys, these guys aren't super expensive. I mean, the turtle itself is going to be about $30. Not bad for a pet. I mean, think about how much you'd spend on a dog. So, now he's starting to get active, but they're a really good pet. I, I, I definitely could recommend these. Once again, your setup's going to cost well over $100. You're going to have to have a tank. You're going to have to have lights. You're going to have to have a basking area, but it's much, much more reasonable than, say, a rid-eared slider. And these guys also aren't very prone to biting. I've never had one try to bite me other than when they think my hand is food in the water. So that's something else to keep in mind. Uh, 
the big thing with keeping any pet turtle, you've got to worry about a salmonella. And mostly that's because, well, turtles live in water and eat dead meat. And salmonella likes wet, uh, pretty much meaty things. And turtles shed too, and sometimes that shed will stick on them, and that just gives food for the salmonella. So you, that's, that, that is a big problem. So you have to be careful. But if you've got children and you want a turtle, as long as they wash their hands, you make sure you do everything right. I recommend these guys. They're a big enough animal that it's hard for a turtle, uh, child to hurt them unless they drop them. But they're small enough they're reasonable. They're really, really good pet. So one of the cons, though, to the African side neck is that you still have to keep it in an aquarium meaning you have to keep the water and all properly. But this is a Russian tortoise. This guy, much better. This is actually, would be the animal I recommend the most to anyone wanting a turtle if it wasn't for one of the cons. But we'll get to that for, in a second. So Russian tortoises, they get a little bit bigger than this, but not too big. In fact, the name Russian tortoise is actually a little bit misleading. Uh, they're not found in Russia. They're found in the Middle East. Uh, the old names are the Afghan tortoise and the Horsefields tortoise. But they started calling them Russian tortoises because when the Russians uh, were in the area, occupying the area during the Second World War, they would bring these guys home as pets because they make wonderful pets. The cons, though, to this animal is that most of them are wild caught. Very few are produced captively, and that's just sad. These guys come in pretty beat up usually. They don't usually look the best. Uh, they're usually missing toes. When they import them, they throw them all in a box together, and whatever happens from there happens. A lot of them die uh, making it over here. There are, several, there are several places working on captive breeding these guys, and if you want one, that would be the way to do it. One of the side effects of the way they're shipped over here that we really have to worry about, especially someone like me who has other tortoises, uh, Russian tortoises are, have gotten to be pretty bad about carrying the tortoise herpes virus. It's a herpes virus that only affects tortoises, but it doesn't show side effects in the Russian tortoises, which kind of its normal type of host. But in other tortoise species, like your giant tortoises and your red-footed tortoises, this is very quickly lethal. It's not a something you want to play with. So this guy is still in quarantine. I just kind of took this guy in a couple weeks ago. And I'm waiting to see if I can find a vet that can actually test uh, for this. Because as long as he tests fine, you know, I can get him out of quarantine and keep him at least over near my other animals. But right now, he's all the way on the other side of the basement. So, other uh, pros to the Russian tortoise. They're not big. Um, and they don't live in water. But they also eat a lot of grass, a lot of greens. You're pretty much just feeding this guy salad. You want to not feed lettuce as much as your greens like collards, mustards, and turnip greens. But they'll also eat quite a bit of fruit, too. Uh, but mostly grasses. So, I mean, they typically live in, like, steppe savanna. So, pretty dry areas, a lot of grass. But they make really good pets. They're really tame. You don't usually have to worry about them biting. But just the means of them coming over is not really good. So, But if you ever get a chance, and you can find a captive bred one, which is going to be a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. Definitely, definitely, I would say that would be the absolute best turtle pet possible. They are just wonderful. Once they get used to you, they're wonderful. Uh, they do require a lot of space to walk and dig, but they're really a very, very nice pet. Uh, so definitely, if you're thinking about getting a turtle, Put it on your considerations to try to find a captive bred one of these. It's just, I don't know how else to say it. They're just an excellent pet. So, 
I'm Ty Smith, and if you want to, look on INAT. Uh, that's probably the place I'm the most popular at right now. Uh, it's just Ty Smith, all lowercase letters. Uh, look on there. You can follow me. I mean, we go out herping. We find all kinds of cool stuff just around the state of Virginia. Well, that was amazing. I'm so glad that uh, Ty invited me down here. He's such an expert on these turtles, and I, I know I've learned a whole lot just being here and listening to that, and I hope you have too. Uh, big thanks to my patrons on Patreon. So spread some knowledge. Be nature heroic.